you know, that's part of the equation. I mean, yeah. What do you do when you're watching the Super Bowl? Yeah, you know, there's balance and there's some freedom. You eat broccoli <laughs> while you watch the World Series? I think on balance. On balance. On okay. balance. So there's, you know, there's some freedom and flexibility yeah, in it. Yeah. But so in, in relationship with my kids, am I breathing life into mm -hmm. my kids? Am I, am I helping them to see their future and their destiny that God has created for them? Am I speaking words of character and life into them? And, and it really plays out in just about every relationship that you have. Huh. And your word? Pure. Okay, now what, what, what's, what's going on there? Uh, hey, well, <laughs> a lot's going on there. The, the interesting part is, is when, when Jesus says, uh, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Mm. It has a lot more than just sexual purity or physical yeah. purity, which obviously when I tell people and guys, especially, hey, my word's pure, they're like, okay. good luck, you God help. bless <laughs> you. Or, hey, you got a problem. Yeah. Purity is so much more than the physical. It's the mental, yeah. it's the emotional, yeah. it's the relational. One of the things that I'm experiencing is just, hey, this year for 365 days, can I focus on what God wants when it comes to purity? Hmm. What does it look like for purity to, to, to manifest every aspect of my life? Where are you mm -hmm. most impure? I would say relationships, and that's mm. what our book's on. Mm. Yeah. Because there comes with so many motives. Every, mm -hmm. Everyone has some, hey, what do you want from me? Yeah. And, and it's always there's judging. There's power, there's control, there's judgment. Yeah. And the, the relational aspect is, is massive. I obviously for guys, most guys would go, Hey, that's a physical thing. That's the biggest area. But as I've grown in my walk with Christ over the years, I've experienced that, that purity of relationships. When you have that, that trust mm -hmm. and that authenticity in a relationship, you don't have to worry about, about what the other person, where, what they're come from is. Yeah. God can do amazing things. Yeah. You know, one of the things we've experienced too, Jim, is when you select a word, you know, it, it, the way it's meant to be is it's a God word, not a good word, right. but yeah. a God word. Right. And it's a word that God is saying, hey, I want to I wanna do a work in your life around this one particular word. We've discovered that when you select a word, that you will have tremendous opportunities for God to work things out in your life through that word. It always surfaces. Yeah, the, uh, as I was reading that that part, that uh, the twentieth um, uh, narrow the focus for greater life change. I, what I was thinking as I was reading that was that one word can become almost like a gateway to a whole universe of uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, domino effect. Yes, yeah. oh, it is. Yeah. Now another one that really kind of jumped out at me <clears throat> was thirty three. The path you pick leads to life or death. And this, mm. this, this reminded me about the significant role of decisions in our lives. Yes. You, you sometimes you make the smallest decision mm. has this huge impact. And I look at people whose lives are in disarray and generally speaking, they've made a choice or a series of choices that have produced this. Yeah. Uh, talk to me a bit about this. Well, I'll tell you, we know that little things always lead to big yeah. things. And, yeah. and a lot of times we'll see something significant happen in someone's life and we'll say, wow, how, where did that come from? You know, a relationship blows up or, or you have a significant health problem. But if, if we're honest and we can look back over time, we can see a lot of decisions that were made over the course of many years that led to this yeah. moment of crisis. So, you know, we say, hey, the path, every single day you are given an opportunity to choose a path that will lead to life or will lead to death. So, you know, when you're looking on balance, you're saying, is the decision I'm making right now going to promote life or death? And, and it's a significant uh, way to, to direct your life. You know, there's a lot of father hunger out, out there these days, uh, both in terms of Canada and the U.S. I think it's almost uh, two-thirds of marriages ending up some kind of uh, separation or divorce. Yeah. More and more teenagers especially, and young boys and girls as well, are growing up without their dad. They've got a, a, um, a stepdad, or, mm -hmm. or their mother has a live-in boyfriend, or their mother has nobody in, in her life, and so they have no, no uh, male figure at all. Um, I'm, I'm reading your book and I'm thinking, uh, there's a lot of father to child talk here. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean to dumb it down. It, you, you almost sound like coaches with, uh, mm -hmm. with, 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 a, with a football team or a lacrosse team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see yourself as coaches here? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. The, the role of the coach is to get someone from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Helping them be able to get to that point uh, is, is coaching. That's ba basically what, yeah. what coaching is all about. We've experienced with Wisdom Walks, the cool thing about this whole life on life concept. Mm -hmm. We've experienced where we'll have fathers call, call us up. We just got, got an email the other yeah. day. Sits down every morning with his 11 year old over breakfast and is going mm -hmm. through 40 principles. Yeah. Emailed us, oh my gosh, hit rumble strips. Yeah. God's doing amazing things. I never imagined sitting down my 11 year old having these types of conversations yeah. that, I, that I just thank God that this book, this resource is in our hands. Did you guys have good dads? Yeah, I think, I mean, Dan, you had a great father. Yeah. 
And, and I would say I had a great relationship with my father to an extent. My father uh, also was an alcoholic. So we had some challenges in the home. We had some dichotomy, you know, kind of both ends of the spectrum. At one moment, greatest father on the planet, and the next one, it's like, my, you know, yeah. really? And uh, so I think what, one of the objectives of this book was to really create a tool where someone could fill in the gap, could stand in the gap for someone who maybe doesn't have that dad in their life or maybe has difficult relationships at home. Let's face it, we know our homes uh, throughout the world are broken. And even with intact homes, there's still opportunities for people to stand in the gap and be intentional and to tap someone on the shoulder and say, mm -hmm. I see greatness in you. Yeah. God has made you with great purpose. Can, can I walk alongside of you? Can I pour wisdom into your life so that you can fulfill the, de the destiny that God has designed for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my dad was off the charts. He loved Christ, came to Christ at a young age. I uh, grew up in a Christian home. I had two older brothers. My dad was all about wisdom walks. Mm. He loved to engage with you. One of our, uh, actually a couple of them, he talks about having three Ds. One of the things that he was passionate about, Jim, was devotions. Yeah. Mm. And he always said the three Ds of devotions are, first it starts out as drudgery, then it mm. turns into a discipline, and then finally it gets to the point that it's a delight. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a model example of what it meant to be a godly father. You have a, a, a kind of a, what do you call this? An inclu uh, uh, bookmark card. A, book, a, book, a bookmark card. A bookmark card. Okay, there you go. Bookmark card. <laughs> it's a bookmark. You bookmark can call it whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, very colorful. Let me show it to the camera here. Uh, on this side, you've got uh, Wisdom Walks, four key relationships. And then on this side, you've got uh, kind of um, a structure here of uh, Watchman, Walker, Workman, Warrior, and Warrior. Just, we've got about two and a half minutes. Uh, what, what are we talking about here? One of the things that we realized is the four core relationships. We, we, we can have relationships in your church, everything. Bottom line is we identified four key relationships. Number one is the walker. The walker is someone that's passionately pursuing Christ, abiding and pursuing with everything they have an intimate relationship with Christ. You can't give away what you don't have. Right. That's the walker. The second thing is, hey, do you have a warrior or two, one or two people you can surround yourself with that hold you accountable? Accountability relationships. It's about challenging and sharpening. Mm -hmm. The third relationship is getting a watchman, somebody that's a season beyond you, someone that, that has gone through life that can sit down with you and invest in your life. Yeah. We are finding more and more there's solo Christians out there, yeah. people living isolated. Hey, do you have someone that's intentionally investing yeah. in your life? Uh, I would want that. I can't find that person. That's a watchman. And lastly is a workman, somebody that you're now pouring in. You become the, the watchman to the workman that you're investing in and able to, to see God do some amazing things. You know, this relational uh, emphasis is so critical. I, I don't think you can accomplish anything in the world today for the Lord outside of relationships. I mean, that, relationships in ministries, relationship individually, uh, there's, so, there's, there's so much there, so much strength in relationships. Just final minute, Jimmy, uh, you, you can speak for yourself. I won't ask you to speak for, for uh, your partner here, but what have you learned in this process of writing this book? Like, mm. has anything kind of blindsided you or surprised you? Yeah, you know what, I think the, the biggest thing that I've learned is that I need the words in this book as well as everyone else, that we're no different than anyone else. We're, we're trying to navigate life well, and we are trying to live for the Lord in a way that honors Him and, and also has has generational impact. And, and so we're in it together. Hmm. You know, that, that we're not coming from the platitudes and, and telling people how to do it. We're giving a simple game plan that has actually worked for us in our lives and, uh, and we're sharing it with you. And you know, I'll tell you, we go back and we read and reread and do it again. And I'm like, I needed that today. Jimmy Page, Dan Britton, the book's called Wisdom Walks. 40 Life Principles for a Significant and Meaningful, meaningful Journey. Thanks for coming away, guys. Looking Thanks, forward to the Truth to Go segments. Yeah.